गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास टूडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एंजियोस्पर्म्स दे आर द मोस्ट इवॉल्व प्लांट्स ऑन दिस अर्थ बिकॉज दे रिप्रोड्यूस सेक्शुअली वेन वी से दे रिप्रोड्यूस सेक्शुअली मीन्स दे हैव मेल एंड फीमेल पार्ट्स इन रिप्रोडक्टिव यूनिट्स विच आर कॉल्ड फ्लावर्स एंड सो द नेम कम्स फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स ना फ्लावर्स आर द रिप्रोडक्टिव स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ द प्लांट दे कंटेन द मेल पार्ट यू नो द एंड्रोशियम एंड द फीमेल पार्ट द गाइनोशियम gametes are formed union of gametes takes place that is fertilization occurs and the result is a diploid zygote gametes are haploid that is they have n number of chromosomes the two gametes when they fuse they form a diploid cell having 2n number of chromosomes which is called zygote and that zygote undergoes multiplication cells it divides to form more and more cells all the cells are diploid so a plant body has got a sporophytic uh, generation and a gametophytic generation and there is alteration of generation in the life cycle of a flowering plant today i will explain to you the life cycle of a flowering plant so to begin with the main plant body is sporophytic by sporophytic we mean it has 2n number of chromosomes now this plant body produces flowers flowers are the reproductive structures or units of uh, angiosperms now flowers are also diploid flowers contain the male and the female part the male part is called the androecium which is made up of stamens you know stamens have anthers stamens have anthers anthers have pollen sacs these pollen sacs are also called microsporangia and one is called a microsporangium four pollen sacs are present in two anthers each stamen has got two anthers each anther has got two lobes which are called pollen sacs each pollen sac is called a microsporangium same way the female part of the plant is called gynoecium it is made up of carpels or pistils uh, which have a swollen portion called ovary the ovary has ovules and the ovule is called a megasporangium megasporangium all these have two n number of chromosomes the microsporangium undergoes meiosis to produce the microspore the megasporangium undergoes meiosis to form the megaspore megaspore is also called macrospore now after meiosis the chromosome number is reduced to half so microspore and macrospore have n number of chromosomes that means till here this was the sporophytic phase having 2n number of chromosomes in all these parts now from here begins the gametophytic phase of the life cycle which has n number of chromosomes 
So the microspore forms the male gametophyte. And the megaspore forms the female gametophyte. The male gametophyte forms the male gametes. And the female gametophyte forms the female gametes. Female gamete XL. Which has N number of chromosomes. So this is the gametophytic phase. Then the male gamete and the female gamete unite. So NNN again becomes 2N number of chromosomes. That is a diploid cell is formed. The zygote is the first diploid cell in the sporophytic phase in the life cycle of a flowering plant or an angiosperm. This zygote undergoes divisions to form the embryo. Embryo is contained in the seed. The seed then germinates to form the main plant body. So this is the life cycle of an angiospermic plant. Where we have seen that the main plant, main plant body is a sporophyte, a sporophytic phase or we say it is a sporophyte which produces reproductive units called flowers. Flowers have male and female parts. The male part is called an androsium. The female part is called the gynosium. Androsium is made up of stamens. Gynosium is made up of carpels or pistils. Stamens contain anthers. Anthers have pollen sacs which are called microsporangium. Carpal contains ovary. Ovary has ovules which are called the megasporangium. These then undergo meiosis. That is here the sporophytic phase changes into the gametophytic phase because 2n number of chromosomes have been reduced to half. Diploid to haploid which ultimately form the male and the female gametes, which are also haploid. And fusion of the two gametes, two dissimilar gametes, fusion of two dissimilar gametes results in the formation of a diploid zygote and that is called fertilization. This process is called fertilization, that is union of or fusion of dissimilar gametes Zygote undergoes several divisions. All these divisions are mitotic in nature where the chromosome number remains same. And this embryo is contained inside the seed. Seed actually is a mature ovule. So all these changes that are taking place are taking place inside the ovule. This ovule after fertilization is called the seed which contains the embryo. And once the seed is sown, it germinates and again the main plant body is formed. The plant becomes sexually mature and produces reproductive units. So this is alternation of generation in the life cycle of an angiosperm. Sporophytic, gametophytic, then sporophytic alternation of generation in an angiospermic plant. So this was about, this is the basis. We will go into the detail of each part. How, what is the structure of this? How the gametophytic phase, how a male uh, gametophyte and female gametophyte are formed? How gametes are formed? How fusion takes place? How the embryo is formed? What are the different parts of the embryo? We will go into the details later. This is the base or let us say the skeleton of the whole chapter. Now one by one we will be discussing each part. So now we come to flowers. Now as I told you flower is a reproductive structure of an angiosperm or a flowering plant. How do we define a flower? A flower is nothing but a condensed or a modified shoot having four floral whorls or having four floral
floral parts arranged in four whorls or rings. Arranged in four whorls or rings. Now these four parts, the outermost part is called the calyx. Calyx is the outermost part. Each, this is a collective term. It is made up of sepals. These sepals are green in color. Um, second part, this is the outermost. The second whorl is corolla. It is made up of petals which are generally colored. Now these two parts are called the non-essential parts of the flower because flower is a modified condensed reproductive structure. Now these are not helping in reproduction. So they are called non-essential or even we use the term accessory parts of the flower. Now we come to the reproductive parts of the flower. The third whorl is called the androsium. Androsium is the male part of the flower. We represent male by this symbol. Androsium is made up of stamens. Each stamen has a filament and an anther. Now anther actually is made up of two lobes. Anther lobes like this which are joined by a connective and a filament. So this is the filament. These are the two anther lobes. Each anther lobe is made up of two pollen sacs. And since there are two lobes, so in all we have four pollen sacs. If we cut the tears of this, we see four pollen sacs like this. This is the connective, this is the filament. And these pollen sacs are filled with pollen grains. Which are the male cells. Actually pollen grains are the male cells. And these male cells will produce the male gametes. Pollen grains produce two male gametes. Each pollen grain. Then fourth part is the gynosium which is the innermost part. This is the female part of the flower which is represented by the sign uh, circle and a plus under it. This is made up of carpels or pistils. Each of these has a basal swollen ovary, a slender style and an expanded stigma. So it is an ovary, a style like this and an expanded stigma present on the thalamus. Ovary, style, stigma. This ovary contains ovules. Ovules form the seed after the process of fertilization as I told you. So this is the female part. These two, male and female parts, as I told you, these two do not help in reproduction. They are called non-essential. These two help in reproduction, which is the main function of a flower. So they are called the essential parts of a flower. Or we call them the necessary parts of the flower. So this was the basic structure of the reproductive unit called the flower. Now, if all these four parts are present in a flower, the flower is called a complete flower. It has all four parts. If any one of them is missing, the flower is called an incomplete flower. If any one of the floral whorls are missing, the flower is an incomplete flower. Sometimes we even use the term imperfect for this. And for all four parts present, complete flower is also called a perfect flower. Now coming to the male and the female part of the flower. If both these parts are present in a flower, that is male and female part is present, 
we use the term bisexual for this or we also call it a hermaphrodite flower. When both androsium and gynosium are present, male and female part. If any one of them is absent, the flower is called a unisexual flower. Contains only one sex. Uni means one. If the male part is present, then the flower is called a staminate flower. If only the female part is present, the flower is called a pistillate flower. Sometimes both of them are not present. The flower does not contain uh, the male as well as the female flower. In that case, the flower is called a neuter flower. Lacks both male and female part. So, this is about the sex of the flower. Uh, now, coming to this. If unisexual flowers, that is staminate and pistillate flowers, are present on the same plant. Flowers are different, but both the flowers are present on the same plant. We use the term monoecious to describe it, like in case of maize. Both male and female flowers are present on the same flower. Uh, in case of cucumber. And when they are present on different plants, that is male flowers on one plant, and female uh, parts or flowers present on a different plant, we use the term dioecious for it, like we see in coconut, in date. So, this is about the sexes of the flower. Then, since we are talking about the flower in detail, I will erase this. A very important thing about the flower is how these parts are placed together and what is the position of the ovary in relation to the other parts. Based on that, flowers are of three kinds. Hypogynous flowers. Hypogynous flowers are such that the ovary is superior. Means it is placed above all the other parts. The other floral parts arise below the ovary. The stamen, the petal and the calyx, they all arise below the ovary. In this case, the ovary is superior. We use the term hypogynous to describe such a flower like in case of mustard and in tomato. This is position of the ovary in relation to other floral parts. Second is perigynous condition where the thalamus forms a cup shaped structure like this. And the rim of these contains the other floral parts. So here the ovary is not superior but it is not inferior also. The ovary is called semi-inferior in this condition. In hypogynous the ovary was superior above. Here the, it is half Inside and half outside, so it is semi inferior in perigynous. This we see in rose, in strawberry. The third condition is called epigynous. Here the ovary is completely enclosed in the thalamus. The ovary is completely enclosed in the thalamus, like. This is the thalamus which completely encloses the ovary like this. And all the other parts arise above the ovary. 
all the other floral parts arise above the ovary. So in this case, the ovary is said to be inferior. This is it. This is condition is called epigynous condition and we see this in peach in apple. So this is the fate of uh, the floral parts in relation to the ovary. Then we come to a few more important terms. That is the symmetry of a flower. If the flower can be cut into two equal halves in any vertical plane from the center. This way, this way, this way and two equal halves result. Then we say the flower is actinomorphic. That is, it can be divided into two equal halves through any vertical plane passing through the center of the flower. Passing through the center of the flower. Like again in mustard, brassica, we find this kind of a condition. The other kind of condition is called zygomorphic in which the flower can be divided into two equal halves along one plane only. When it is cut through one plane, then only the flower is going to have two equal halves. So, divided into two equal halves through one vertical plane. Only. So, this was about symmetry. Then, uh, as I told you, sepals and petals are the non-essential parts. Sepals are green, petals are colored. They basically provide protection to the reproductive parts and rosium and gynosium. The main function is that. And because sepals are green, they also perform the uh, function of photosynthesis. And petals besides providing protection to the flower are colored structures. So they attract insects for pollination because insects are agents of pollination. They carry pollen grain from flower, from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or maybe to another flower. Mainly they are agents of cross pollination. So uh, sepals and petals also have a role to play but they are not uh, directly involved in reproduction. Sometimes what happens the sepals and petals are not differentiated in the flower. They are undifferentiated means both can be colored or both can be green. You cannot separate them. In that case we use the term perianth for them and um, individually they are called tepals. Uh, so, these are some of the important terms. Now, I think I'll stop here. And next class, we will discuss about uh, formation of the male parts, male gametophyte and the female gametophyte. So that we can see how the gametes are formed and how fertilization takes place.